Hey everyone, 2022 is looking like a beautiful year for entertainment, so I love that I can bring you my most hyped TV of 2022 along with films and video games, because there is some pretty amazing stuff to be excited for. The variety is incredible, and if some stuff doesn't gel with you, you always have another thing to look forward to. The way the television medium has expanded over the years is something I never thought I'd see because they've gone from being lower budgeted lesser versions of screen stories to these massive experiences, even bigger than feature films. It's so great to be a fan of entertainment in this day and age, and without further ado, here's my top 10 most anticipated TV of 2022. First, here are some honorable mentions. The Last of Us. It looks to be a faithful adaptation in the TV medium that I think will showcase the same powerful story that I fell in love with when I first played the game. Zootopia Plus. I love that this is going to explore other parts of the Zootopia world as a short film anthology series, and it's going to be nothing short of a fun and hilarious time. Baymax, one of the most lovable characters in recent years, and I'm so happy he's getting his own series that'll encapsulate the most endearing qualities of his character. Peacemaker, the marketing around this show was so bonkers, and with having seen the first few episodes, this entire show looks to be another blast in the DC universe. I love the fun that John Cena is having in this role, and I absolutely love how he plays this hilarious jerk of a character. And seeing James Gunn's passion for this project is another reminder how special this show is going to be in the grand scheme of things in the DC universe. Secret Invasion Seeing Nick Fury lead the intergalactic organization of S.W.O.R.D. is a very hyped thing to see, and how this will bring about unknown repercussions to the MCU. Also, very excited to see what role Amelia Clark will play, and if she'll play a character we as Marvel fans will be invested in. She-Hulk I can't wait to see Tatiana Maslany be a part of the MCU as the iconic Jennifer Walters, and see what role she'll play in the bigger picture, but also I can't wait to fall in love with another character that I'll want to read up on. Miss Marvel. Kamala Khan is honestly one of the most delightful characters in the Marvel Universe who I was happy to experience on the page and in the new Avengers game. I can't wait to see her solo her own series and basically act like all of us in the sense of being really big fans of these superheroes, but will also adore her for the more human approach in the coming of age angle, which Marvel always exceeds expectations with for all these characters. Number 10. Willow. The fact a Willow show is happening in this day and age is beyond words. I love the original so much, and Warwick Davis is always a delight with any character he plays. I'm excited to see how the story will continue and introduce more lore and great characters to the world of Willow. The show playing with the fantasy element is something I'm over the moon excited for because it takes our imaginations to new places. It's simply just fun to see a fantasy world we know and love become even bigger than it already was while also capturing the essence of the original film. Number 9, Moon Knight. I love that Marvel is taking another mysterious character and giving us another angle of the universe we're not as used to. The first glimpse along with other great Marvel shows I mentioned looks like we're getting stylistically different and unique shows that'll reflect the personalities of these characters. I love that this will be a complex, dark, and super engaging piece of Marvel storytelling that'll push the envelope and will make us care about the human struggle of Mark Spector, even if he's set up for more big adventures in the MCU. Number 8, House of the Dragon. Game of Thrones is my favorite show of all time, and I love the rich themes and fantasy that change the way I engage with not only fantasy stories, but stories in general. I love that this prequel is going to lay the groundwork for a show and world I love, but also make me focus on the political intrigue at hand, and the fascinating drama between what looks to be another phenomenal ensemble of characters. The fantasy is going to rock my world, and even though something like Willow is more fantastical and even whimsical, the complex nature of these characters is what's going to lock me into the show. I can't wait to finally have more to look forward to in the world of Westeros every week when the show finally releases. Number 7, Stranger Things 4. This is such a special show that because of its amazing retro style that also combines science fiction, horror, and coming of age, this show is the definition of a delight. I fell in love with this young ensemble ever since I saw episode 1 of the entire show, and with how the stakes have been raised each season, I can't imagine how this new season will raise these stakes even higher. 
It's going to be a hilarious, moving, and frightening piece of more incredible television, and with the fun I have watching Stranger Things, I'm so excited for more of that craziness. Number 6, The Umbrella Academy 3. The Umbrella Academy is quite possibly my favorite superhero show of all time. There, I said it. Stylistically so unique and complements its original comic source material very well, but I love that it differentiates itself from the comic and tells its own story, rather than a beat for beat adaptation. It only takes the spirit of the comic, and does its own thing, and that's one of the reasons why this show works so very well. I love that I have no idea where the story could go, and to go along with it, this show's ensemble playing the Hargreaves is pretty pitch perfect in my opinion. The wait after season 2 is so gonna be worth it, and I can't wait for more craziness in the zany world of magic, creatures, time travel, and superheroes. I mean, come on. Number 5, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. I honestly wasn't expecting this show to be announced, like, at all. Rather than doing another adaptation of the trilogy we know and love, I love that this is going to be a new era of the story we haven't experienced before, and one that I'm going to love with every fiber of my being. Who honestly knows where this part of the story could go? And I'm excited to see it give me those same emotional pulls watching the Middle Earth film saga, and see how it'll bridge into those stories down the line. The production sounds incredibly promising, I'm down with this new cast of actors, and I'm just so excited that along with the Wizarding World and Star Wars in 2022, I'll be able to enjoy new stories set in Middle Earth in such a captivating medium. Number 4, Star Wars The Bad Batch Season 2 Speaking of Star Wars, brace yourself because there's going to be some fun to be had. But to start off the excitement for these Star Wars programs, I'm so excited to see the continuation of The Bad Batch, which is quite possibly my new favorite animated Star Wars show. I just love that it's in an era that I'm personally not familiar with in that time period right after the fall of the Republic leading into the rise of the Empire. The Bad Batch crew themselves all have such a fun and interesting bond, and I can't wait to see more of them work together in different scenarios, and also what's in store for the Omega character. She already has so much intrigue, but to see more of her growth and see what larger parts she'll have in the galaxy is one of the joys of engaging with this saga. Number 3, Star Wars Andor. I am quite intrigued by Cassian Andor's character and love that in Rogue One, there is more tomb than meets the eye. There's an interesting moral code at hand, and I know this show is going to have more compelling nuggets of information that'll make him even more interesting than what we saw in the film. I love that rather than this show being a full-on war story in the Star Wars galaxy, it's going to be a straight-up espionage story that, like Bad Batch, will explore the early days of the Rebellion era. It does excite me how it'll showcase different planets and new characters that'll more or less leave an impression on Cassian's character. I thought that the backstory he mentioned about being in the fight since he was 6 years old was so interesting, and I'm so excited to see how that'll play into the story's bigger picture. And maybe if there's more to the story to explain how motivated he is to fight for the Rebellion's cause. This will probably be the closest we have to a spy story set in the Star Wars galaxy. Just about one man's struggle to make it right, and the sacrifices he has to make along the way. Number 2, The Mandalorian Season 3 Everything about The Mandalorian has been said already, but I'm so excited to see the repercussions left from Season 2, and if there will be a sort of time jump or not. And because of that, I wonder how and if the relationship will change between Din Djarin and Grogu, and if how everyone will face what will eventually be the rise of the First Order, and if Din Djarin does take it into his hands to restore order on the planet of Mandalore. Also, if there's going to be a conflict there between him and Bo-Katan, about who should be the rightful leader, and if Moff Gideon will be the one to stir up that conflict conflict and bring about what Zemo was to Captain America and Iron Man in Civil War. I would love to see it, but as the folks at Force Center say, speculate responsibly. And I can't wait to engage with these Star Wars stories presented to me and how it'll add to the larger saga. And speaking of adding to the larger saga, my most anticipated TV in 2022 is none other than number one, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yes, I'm excited for Ewan McGregor back, of course Hayden Christensen is another gem, but I'm excited to see where this miniseries will take my love of Obi-Wan even further. Like we saw with Luke in The Last Jedi, I find it highly fascinating that this show will be a deep character study of Obi-Wan, and we'll see how he takes this journey of being this broken person to eventually having this restored hope of soon taking young Luke on this adventure that will change things forever. 
And dare I say it, I think this series is going to make me care about Obi-Wan even more, and through Yoon's excellent performance, we're definitely going to feel that struggle in such a genuine fashion. I'm excited to see the sort of western aesthetic with the scenes on Tatooine, which I know series director Deborah Chow is absolutely gonna nail. I also have a feeling that because this is such a dark time in the galaxy with the rise of the Empire, I think it's gonna really get under our skin, and we'll experience the pain that Obi-Wan feels trying to find his place to soon restore order and confront Vader, and bring back that light. Not to mention seeing other things in place with Inquisitors and maybe Jedi we haven't met yet. Whatever will happen, and whatever the first look will be, I think this show is going to be a work of art. I never thought I'd do this list, usually movies are my jam, but here we are. So much TV to look forward to, the medium's come a long way, and I can't wait to engage with these experiences. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll hope to see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.